Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Alex Review, and let's get into this new Ride One Up bike next. All right, so this is from Ride One Up, and actually, Jesse, this is one of my new favorite bikes. Really? This is the Prodigy V2. It's the ST XR step through frame. Super complicated. When you go to their website, you're going to get confused because they kind of jumbled two very different bikes into a very similar names. So this one does not have the carbon fiber belt. This is a regular chain. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the other one's bad. I'm just saying I fell in love with this particular one. Mm -hmm. um, and so let's get into the stats and figure out why I like it so much. Okay. It's a mid motor torque sensing bike. It's kind of like the ultimate in terms of making the bike feel like it's a part of you. Mm -hmm. And usually I would in the past be like, well, I, I'm not worthy of that. Like those <laughs> cost too many, too much money. Those are usually 4,000 plus dollars. Mm -hmm. But now because you know, China and so many of them, it's coming down in price. This bike is 23.95. So not cheap, but for what you're getting, I think really a great value. We've got it in onyx black, but you can also get it in faded bronze and in sea fog. It's a class three bike. And so that means with its 250 watt mid motor, you can go up to speeds of 28 miles an hour. I like that a lot because there's times when, um, you know, you're trying to go through traffic and stuff like that, where, you know, I'm not like a 28 mile an hour guy the whole time, mm -hmm. but I personally like to be able to get up to those speeds on crowded roads when I need to. And you might be saying, well, doesn't that make it more dangerous? Well, not really, because if you're moving along with traffic, that means that the relative speed between you and the cars is going to be a lot slower. So the cars are going to have a lot more time to see you, to react to what you're doing, and you're not going to be slowing them down as much if you're going 28 miles an hour. Um, that means that they're going to have a long time to slow down, make sure that they have enough time to pass you, as opposed to coming up on you, coming around a curve. I like to think of it as the International Space Station, right? It's traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. When Dragon Crew comes up to meet them, it's also going 17,500 miles an hour, but because they're going the same speed relative to each other, it looks like they're not moving. And the same thing is true here, as Jesse said, if you're going 10 miles an hour and people whizzing by you at 25, but if you're going 25, they're not whizzing by you anymore. Exactly. So this has some nice German components. This has almost all bros components, which are German uh, made. And so it's got a German made motor um, for 250 watts. And you might be like 250 watts. Right. Most e-bikes, 250 watts would be underpowered. And so I can get that there's a lot of confusion going on. The reason why most bikes have, you know, somewhere between 500 to 1000 watts is because it is one gear and it is in the rear hub, meaning that it is the wheel itself that is being um, accelerated. What is happening here is that this mid drive motor is helping you at the crank. So you are putting in some of that energy and then it is going through a gearbox and you get to change the gears and the torque remains the same. That's what gets you up to speed in this bike. The advantage of hub motors is that you can have a thumb throttle. Almost all mid motors, I don't think I've ever seen a mid motor that has a thumb throttle. So if that's something you like to help you get through intersections, you won't find that on a mid motor. So no thumb throttle here. Only right. things that you're for your thumbs to do are ring the bell and change the gears. But here's the thing. I was just riding two different bikes today. I was riding a cadence sensing bike and then I hopped on this and I felt like I was just at one with the bike all of a sudden. Whereas the other cadence sensing bike, I felt like I was on a herky jerky thing. And that's because the torque sensing is going to measure the torque that you are putting on the pedal in a very short span of time. It's, it's very, very fast reacting. So when right. you start to give it some torque, it amplifies that it amplifies the torque. So if you're at a high gear and you're barely moving the pedal, that's okay. It says, well, there's torque. I should give it some motor power right. and it'll help you through in a cadence sensing bike. One of the things that can happen is that you basically get locked out the cadence sensor on other bikes, more cheaper bikes. If you aren't pedaling fast enough, then the magnet isn't going past the magnet sensor. It doesn't know that you're trying to pedal and it doesn't help you at all. Right. It's completely different in this bike and it is so nice. Also, this bike has such intuitive little controls. There's just one little control panel up there, but that's kind of all you need. And I just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just right where I want my thumb to be. It feels really good and it tells me everything I need to know. It even tells you the wattage, which I thought is such a nice thing. You're riding along and you're like, how many watts is the bike using right now? Oh, 56 watts. It's just, I don't know, it's really well thought out. Now there's, there's room um, for you to probably mount your phone, maybe even a cup holder. Um, although you do have a nice spot for your water bottle. Yeah. 
Although that does cut down on the advantage of this bike, which is the step through design. I love having this open so that I don't have to swing my leg up over the bike. I can walk through it. Um, putting a cup holder here takes a away a lot of that. I kind of wish that's kind of the problem with this design. They hid the battery really well, which is awesome. It doesn't really feel like an e-bike. People on the road don't really think of you as an e-bike. Um, so I don't know, think twice about whether you put a water bottle there. Well, and that brings up the rear rack. This is the rear rack and fender. So you can't get fenders without also getting the rear rack. And look at why this is nice from a design point of view. Look at this strut that comes down. It is not attached to this. This goes through the fender. It's just a really sleek design. Also, I just love this rear light. This is not a brake light. This is a running light. It's always on whenever mm -hmm. the bike's on, but it gives you really good visibility because this is lit up all the way around the corner. Just a very nicely done sleek design. It's only 40 pounds, but I, I think if you're carrying that's groceries, that's probably going to hold your laptop, not... a water bottle. Some uh, what, else, what else do you need? Right. Um, and it does allow to, you know, put on a pannier bag or something uh, else to increase your carrying capacity. And also, metal fenders yeah, both in the front and the rear. Also, with these nice little flares on them. It's yep. just a, it's just a very well designed bike. So you get 90 newton meters of torque. A lot of other e-bikes, you're going to get about half of that. So mm -hmm. a lot. It's a very torquey bike. You've got a lot of power here. Um, let's talk about the aluminum alloy frame keeps the weight of the bike down. It's 58 pounds. It's not a light bike, but for this size bike, I was actually surprised by how light it is. It's a hardtail, but you do get front suspension. So you get 100 millimeters of front suspension, which is really nice. The battery is Samsung cells, which is really nice. So it's 36 volts, 14 amp hours, um, and it's made by Falion. It's a BN21. Um, I just like seeing that it's brand name cells. And oh, wait, what did you just do there? Yeah. So I have a slight gripe with this bike and it is that it comes with this battery cover, which is not the battery. Most e-bikes have an integrated battery that doesn't have a cover. Um, or, or the cover is attached to the battery. Yeah, I, I mean, if you could even call it that. Um, so with this bike, they have this separate cover with its own separate mechanism um, to release. And the problem with that is when we got ours delivered, um, this release mechanism was broken. It did not allow us to actually um, mount it onto the bike and click in. Yeah, we had to tape it on. Um, and I think that it's probably due to a poor design. Be very careful when operating the battery release, uh, the battery cover release latch, um, because I'm worried that it might break. But when we reached out to ride one up, they're really good customer service. We got one shipped to us right away. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of what you're looking for in a company. I've read a lot of reviews from ride one up and everyone seems to be really happy with their customer service. Next, I just want to talk about the battery a little bit. It's pretty small when it comes to e-bike batteries. They do get a lot bigger and heavier from here. Um, but again, the huge advantage, because it is a torque sensing mid motor bike, what that allows you to do is always make sure that you are putting in some power um, to the bike when you're moving forward. And what that means is it's going to drastically increase your range because let's say you're only putting in 100 watts of power and this is doing 250. The split of power between the two of you is excellent. On a normal e-bike, Again, to get to the torques that we're talking about, you'd have to get like a 500 watt hub motor. So it's gonna be burning 500 watts. And if you aren't continually pedaling and you're just throttling along, you're burning way, it's way, this bike is so efficient. Well, especially on takeoff. So a lot of what gets wasted is when you're trying to accelerate the bike. And mm -hmm. so when you're accelerating, you're starting to pump. Um, on an e-bike where you just get to throttle through that, um, or just do this light cadence sensing right. where you're not really you're doing anything. You're throwing away tons exactly. and tons of watt hours in a span of just a few seconds. I love the hydraulic brakes on this bike. Um, they're hydraulic four piston Tektros and they feel awesome. Mm -hmm. A lot of great braking power for the 180 millimeter uh, disc brakes. And that's something that you really want with a class three e-bike because you can get up to 28 miles an hour, you're gonna wanna get to zero miles an hour pretty quickly sometimes and having really nice brakes is a godsend it's got maxis recon race tires and i want to talk about the size here these are 27 and a half so very big mm -hmm. by two and a quarter kind of a perfect size mm -hmm. not too thin not too fat so you get real good efficiency but plenty of grip i actually fell in love with them because they don't look too big on bike paths people don't look at you and go like that's a motorcycle but yet they're not so thin that when you hit a puddle or gravel that you're gonna lose control. Yeah, it's it's like a little bit bigger than a regular mountain bike tire. Um, I, 
I really like them a lot. I also really like the brown on them. So nice. It, it really it makes nice it pop. Classy look. So it's got a KMC nine speed. Um, your shifters up there, really nice uh, micro shift SL shifters. Everything felt really smooth and I never had any of that like grind or clink that you get. It's just really well set up at the factory. I also love that these are metal pedals. The other thing that I like is Nice and quiet. Yeah, it's such a, it's a stealth bike. Yeah, I've heard people call it like the stealth assassin. Uh, it really is nice to be quiet. It's got an 80 lux front headlight. It's got this really nice rear light on the back. It's gonna make your visibility really cool. My little wish list thing would be that this were a brake light that it would flash or something when you're braking. I wanna show you on the screen right now that there's two different sizes. So you can pick the frame size that works for you because if you're not the right size for the frame, uh, it won't be a good fit. So make sure you check this out carefully and make sure that as we're talking about this, if you want the carbon fiber, belt that that you get the right model i feel like they they should have been more clear on the website or just called them two completely different model names mm -hmm. mixing and matching the models to me just makes it really confusing so take your time and now we have not tested out the carbon fiber bike so we cannot vouch for it personally um, but the idea of it is that it comes with a cvt or a continuously variable transmission um, which should allow you to control basically the gearing um, in the belt so normally a belt doesn't, isn't able to shift gears, um, but with that CVT, it can allow you to kind of change the gearing of the bike. Now, we have not tested that out. I would out. love to test that actually, because yeah. I was reading some people loved it in the reviews and some people hated it. So I'd, <laughs> I'd love to check that out. We'll yeah. talk to Ride One Up and see if we can get one. And lastly, uh, this can hold a capacity of 300 pounds. No chance for a rear seat here. I wouldn't do that anyway. Mm -hmm. So to me, this bike is kind of a good crossover. I wouldn't, I tried it a little off-road on some of our rides. Wasn't that comfortable because of the hardtail. So if you're gonna do any kind of off-roading, no, it's not really the bike for you. But relax riding, uh, e-bike trails that are meant for bikes and not just like totally off-roading, it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, hitting a little gravel, little puddles, like that's fine because you got the fenders. Um, and so to me, it's just, it's very friendly, it's inviting. It's not like people are gonna be scared of it. And it's just so comfortable and so efficient. And we went on some long rides, like 40 mile rides, and I came home just feeling great. I don't wanna be all snooty and hoity-toity, but this is close to the pinnacle of e-biking. True. Um, this is really where you feel like, um, you know, you are putting in the energy. So if you are like, I need a e-bike for exercise as opposed to just transportation, um, this is an excellent option. Even if it is just transportation, and this is great because it's so efficient um, and it makes the whole bike lighter because this battery can be smaller. Um, and that means that you charge it less. Technically, it costs like less money, even though we're talking when we're talking about pennies between e-bikes. Hey, so it, hey, we look a little different. Huh. Thank you so much for joining us on Analit's review. We really hope that you enjoyed uh, our review of the Prodigy version two. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more content and let us know what you'd like us to review because we can reach out to all kinds of companies and get all kinds of fun things to review, but we need to know from you what that's gonna be. Thanks so much for watching, Now Let's Review.